follow the messages on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most bizarre broadcasts and TV interruptions that defy explanation. Actually, the computer that we have running our news from time to time took off and went wild. Number 10, UVB 76, The Buzzer. It's a shortwave radio. Dr. Sturgis is letting me use it. It picks up broadcasts from around the world. Shortwave radio has been a useful tool in war zones, but it lacks a concrete method of moderation and is relatively simple to use. This means that anyone could theoretically start their own station. One of the format's mystery stations is UVB 76, also known as the buzzer, which primarily transmits short buzzing sounds, not unlike the horn of a boat or truck. This is sometimes accompanied by the muffled sounds of conversation or even screaming. It will be pretty strange on its own, but seemingly random interruptions of Russian voices reading out call signs make the station even more mysterious. It is thought that the signal may have ties to the Russian military operations, but beyond that, its purpose is unknown. Number 9, Yosemite Sam. Watch out! Why, you wanna refer barren critter? This just one of them there train robbery holdups! In 1945, animator Fritz Freeling created the easily irritable cowboy Yosemite Sam as a foil to Bugs Bunny. Little did he know that the character's distinctive voice would be transmitted by a shortwave radio station 60 years later. Simply dubbed Yosemite Sam, the rumored station would crackle to life seven seconds after the start of an hour, playing an audio clip of the title character saying, This was followed by a series of intensifying frequencies, which lasted two minutes. In 2005, two ham radio operators traced the transmission to a radio test site for a military contractor. However, after being spotted by a security guard, they abandoned their documentation efforts and fled. The broadcast ceased soon after and was never heard again. Quit looking over my shoulder! It bothers me! Number 8, Bible Verses on the Playboy Channel. So we're going to be looking for a big one. Tell us I know that uh, she wants... In September 1987, audiences who tuned into a screening of an adult film on the Playboy Channel were surprised when their scheduled programming was interrupted by a display of Bible verses. The incident, which ironically happened on a Sunday, was ultimately pinned on a man named Thomas Haney, who worked for the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN's Christian Financial Planning Department wants to help you properly plan your will or living trust. Although it seems like an open and shut case, Haney has maintained his innocence throughout, and the network claims that the evidence against him is purely circumstantial. Professional broadcasters have even tried to recreate the hack using the religious station's equipment to no avail, which begs the question, who did interrupt the Playboy Channel's broadcast that night? The CBN Ministry Handbook and a one-hour cassette how to help others. Now is the time to reclaim this land with strong Christian leadership. Number seven, the backward music station, Wales. Another radio broadcast, another strange and unexplainable noise. This XM station has been dubbed the backwards music station by some, although it involves no actual music. We think its alternate title, Whales or Whale Song, feels a bit more accurate to the unsettling sounds it broadcasts across the airwaves. The station has no discernible schedule, often falling silent for lengthy periods before popping back up with the sounds of otherworldly feedback. Although one could believe these broadcasts to be mistakes, to do so would ignore the sheer amount of equipment and energy needed to transmit the sounds over such a wide area. Conspiracies abound about what the station's purpose is, with many believing it to be a secret government signal. I just intercepted a signal to a privately owned satellite. There are hundreds of private satellites. The signal is being transmitted on a government frequency. Number six, wow signal. Astronomers are always listening into outer space, so imagine you're listening closely for something as quiet as a pin to drop. Bam, you hear something as loud as books slamming on a table. While all mysterious radio signals can be unnerving, most can at least be traced back to earthly locations. The wow signal, on the other hand, seems to come from the stars. The purportedly extraterrestrial transmission was recorded with a radio telescope at Ohio State University in 1977. You can see that somewhere around quarter past 10 Eastern Standard Time, a very bright 
radio signal pulsed in. But it was only after astronomer Jerry R. Amon came across it that its anomalous nature was discovered. Amon circled the recorded data and wrote, wow, beside it, giving the signal its charmingly simplistic name. Over the years, attempts have been made to hear and record the surprising sound again to no avail, adding to the signal's mysterious nature. Could it really be once-in-a-lifetime evidence of alien life? Number 5. Salacious Super Bowl Hijack There's something else to take note of today. Remember when a Super Bowl interruption used to mean uh, a guy who would run on to the field that none of us were ever allowed to see? The 43rd Super Bowl was a game for the ages, a competitive matchup between the Steelers and Cardinals that drew in more viewers than any Super Bowl before it. Unfortunately for some Arizonans, about 30 seconds of their team's landmark game were interrupted by some unexpected adult content. Somehow, the signal from the game got mixed up with the signal from some channel called Club Jenna. I'm told, a naughty channel. Sure, it's true that the Super Bowl has been known to run some pretty risque ads in the past, but they all pale in comparison to the full frontal nudity seen by these select Tucson residents. In response to the hijack, Comcast ended up offering a $10 credit to each of the affected households, a hefty sum that reflected poorly on the accused culprit, Frank Gonzalez. And Frank Gonzalez was sent to prison for three years, and the really bizarre thing about this story, we're a decade later, it's still not clear why he decided to hack into that Super Bowl broadcast in the first place. Number four, Lucky Seven. Oh, Marcos of Ahoy Mateys fame. He had a pirate radio show. I've been listening to it nonstop, hence, Headphones. While most television hacks are short one-off events, Lucky 7 was a bit different. One of the first ever pirate TV stations, Lucky 7 broadcast for three nights in a row in 1978, taking over an inactive channel in Syracuse. Although the station's host could be a bit disconcerting, wearing a gas mask to remain anonymous, the channel didn't seem to have overtly nefarious motives. Mommy? It simply aired shows like Star Trek and The Twilight Zone, as well as films that were unavailable on television at the time, such as One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Future entertainment was initially promised by the channel's host, but after attracting national attention, Lucky 7 ultimately went off the air for good. But I tried, didn't I? God damn it. At least I did that. Number 3. Zombie Apocalypse Message a Montana TV station is beefing up its computer security after hackers used the station to broadcast a phony zombie alert. Three years after The Walking Dead began on AMC, residents of four U.S. states got a taste of what its characters may have experienced in the early days of infection. Hackers exploited the emergency alert system, interrupting local channels airing programs like The Steve Wilco Show and Barney and Friends to relay a message about the dead rising from their graves. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. There's a clear attempt to make the report sound official, with the voiceover maintaining a professional tone as it instructs viewers not to approach the supposed undead roaming the streets. Although reports claim that the people responsible were arrested, the same message would resurface on Indiana radio station four years after the initial incident. Do not attempt to approach or apprehend these bodies as they are considered extremely dangerous. Number two, 1977 Southern Television broadcast interruption. This is the voice of Emma, representative of the Ashton Galactic Command, speaking to you. In 1938, a radio broadcast of the War of the Worlds inspired mass panic when listeners mistook the story for a real alien invasion. Almost 40 years later, history will repeat itself, this time with an unplanned, smaller-scale broadcast in southern England. Interrupting a news report, a speaker who called himself Rillon, or Gillon, or Astron, depending on who you asked, addressed the ITN audience. This is no that you may share and great awakening as the planet passes into the new age of Aquarius. They urged viewers to abandon their weapons of evil in preparation for the new age of Aquarius. This new era would supposedly mark a period of human evolution, as long as people learn to coexist peacefully. The unsettling transmission lasted almost six minutes, but no culprits, alien or otherwise, were ever found. What is it? Is it terrorists? This, this came from someplace else. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number one, the Max Headroom Intrusion. He's a, he's a <laughs> one of television's strangest broadcast intrusions is also naturally one of its most interesting. On November 22, 1987, residents of Chicago, Illinois experienced two separate signal hijackings by a figure dressed as satirical television host, Max Headroom. The first was an unsettling 20-second long broadcast of Headroom bouncing around the screen, accompanied by a buzzing static sound. Two hours later, he resurfaced, this time interrupting a broadcast of Doctor Who. He spoke with distorted audio, spouting catchphrases and humming the Clutch Cargo theme song. <laughs> The longer he was allowed to speak, the more bizarre the content became. After about 90 seconds, the interruption ended and normal programming resumed. To this day, the identities of the hijackers remain unknown. Well, if you're wondering what's happened, <laughs> so am I. Have you ever witnessed a strange broadcast intrusion? Let us know in the comments. What the hell is going on? You saw we're under attack! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.